What's going on, everybody in the 2K community? It's been a minute, it's lethal. It's been a while, man, since, since like the last video I made, I didn't move into a new house. Been working like crazy, like everything's been good, man, just good vibes. Um, just not playing video games as much nowadays, and that just is what it is, but hey, right, man, holiday spirit, I guess. My boy RDH Hog told me to make a video, so this is the video I'm coming out with. Please watch the video in its entirety, all right? Watch to the end, all right? From this video, you might be able to find you a partner to run tools with, or, you know, you might already be doing something, but you might learn a way to perfect what you're doing. But today's video is pretty much, who can you trust when it comes down to the money? Like, if the money was on the line, who would you roll with? Right? When it comes to 2K, 2K's been around for years now. It's been around for a long time. Me and Nordy Talk have been playing twos for like five 2Ks now. And he wasn't always my number one option, but, you know, to this point, I know through every single 2K, I can always depend on him to do what it takes to win. And he's improved so much, and now we're both goats, and it's a beautiful thing. Because when it comes down to it, you got to be able to trust somebody to deliver in the clutch. Oh, that was a beautiful shot. Just money every single time. Watch the dance, though. Watch the dance, though. That's what I'm talking about. So when you play tools or any game mode, and you get some teammates, you got to be able to depend on them when it matters. Today, we're trying to snap two win streaks, not one, two. All right, as you can see at the top, it's a nine game win streak. See at the bottom, it's an 11 game win streak. We're gonna play both win streaks, win, lose, or draw, but as you see, the middle is empty. That's because nobody wanted to play us. So we were sitting there, couldn't get a game. We tend to run everybody out the park. That's how we know we're good. But anyway, going against these win streaks, you gotta know what you're up against. This is not a series. You only get one game to prove what you got. Now, in a series, I don't think nobody's beating me and my boy. No, this is just straight up. You're not beating us in no series. But for one game, you might get lucky. And that's what this is. It's one game. We're trying to go after these win streaks. So right here, first game, two-way mid-range maestro, two-way three-level score. They strength. They both can shoot, dribble, perimeter defense. They can switch and guard each other's man, and they can dunk. They weakness, though. Post defense or rebounding. Now, me personally, I don't like to have no weakness on the floor. That's why I made the two-way pass first wing or two-way point forward or greatest player of all time. That's just my opinion, but it's a reason why I'm always the best player on the court. Whenever you, you play any game, you have to first recognize who is the best player. All right, and from recognize who the best player is, from there, you start looking at who can do what? Who's better than who? If you have more guys that's better than the other team, your chances of winning are far more better. That means that if the best player is on the opposite team, you got to be the greatest player of all time. That's just all it is to it. So jumping into this game, right? Now, the way this works, like I said, I'm a two-way pass first wing. I'm 6'9", 220. Um, I'm typically going to be a 6'9". Anywhere between 215 to 240. That's typically where I like to make my build at. There's a small forward. I use this build at point guard. So whoever plays with me has to have something with less pass accuracy that puts me at point guard. So you immediately have to be a small forward. All right, I believe RDA Chalk is 6'7 with this build. And he's playing the big man spot. So. Jumping into this game, they got up a quick 6-0. And you got to be able to trust your teammates because when you play against competition, you're going to make mistakes. All right? That's the reason why it's comp. It's because both of y'all can force each other to miss and make mistakes. Right here, I turned the ball over. All right? Bad turnover on my part. That could have been an easy two and a chance for us to really, you know, get the game wide open, but... Nonetheless, I messed up, and now RDA Chalk has to play defense. The biggest thing about playing twos, and this is just for everybody in the community, you have to be able to get a stop on 
each player, right? So whether it's a guard and a big, two wings, two bigs, two guards, it doesn't matter. You got to be able to get a stop on each player. So right there, we just got to stop on both players on the opposite team. When that happens, I can live with the L. At that point, this is the correct way to lose a game. We both got to stop, so if we just couldn't score, as or the H Hawk turns the ball over, if we both just couldn't score, that's fine. All right? At that point, I believe we were good enough to beat the other team. Maybe they just had our number that day. Um, right there, I come up with a block. And RDH Hawk is playing good defense, but watch this move right here. Ugh. I'm going to slow it down. So as you see me on the opposite side, I'm on the opposite side so I can run back out to my man. RDH Hawk was supposed to clearly take their layup, and he acknowledged it when it happened. So it's all good. Great move by that guy. But we got to come up with another stop. All right, at the point we didn't got two stops and we ain't got no points, that's bad. So right there, he's going to shoot the three. Big rebound because, again, one of their weaknesses is rebounding. And they knock down a wide open three. My rule on giving up the three versus the two is like, I give up the three until it matters. You know, like, so if I'm playing in the park or something like that, when you get about 14 points or more, that's when those threes really matter. I give up the two instead of the three. But until then, can't have nothing easy. So right there, big miss. He tried to shoot it because he was in takeover. Um, but we're down 13 nothing. Tough hill to climb, but I'm lethal mindset for a reason. I'm the best player on the floor for a reason. All right, so right there, I'm going to kick it to RDA Chalk. He's going to get it going. Now the score is 13-3. All right, so typically when we play, I'm the playmaker. I'm the point guard, so I'm the one that's handling the ball, and I'm trying to go score. Like, I'm... I'm a pass first guy, but my mentality is to score as you see RDA Chalk with enough turnover. As you can kind of tell, these, like I said, you play against comp, you're going to turn the ball over. It happens. It's about adjusting more than anything else. But nonetheless, I, I'm the primary scorer and I'm the primary defender. I take on the challenge of guarding everybody. And the thing I love about RDA Chalk is. He got that same mentality. He wants to guard the best of the best. And he realizes when, you know, you know somebody needs to do something different as I dunk on his head, Russell Westbrook style. Score 15-7. Remember, this team was up 13-0. Um, I know for me, if I'm up 13-0, hell, we get up 8-0, we won the game. This is facts, but... I'm up. They was up 13-0, and now we're trying to make this miraculous comeback. What is their weakness? Post defense. The reason why this strategy works so well for us is because most people are used to a big man trying to post up. And you can kind of rip a big man, you know, get lucky, get an easy swipe or something, but it's much harder to rip somebody where playmaking is their primary thing. And since I'm so big of a point guard, most of the time I can just muscle little guys out the way. And I, I don't make it hard to score. Like, a lot of people want to dance, dribble, do all these different things. Me, I like to get right to the point. Go to the bucket, score. If you can stop me, stop me. If you can't, you're just going to keep getting buckets all game long. So, again, I'm working the way I want to, and I start to accumulate those fouls. One thing I hope 2K can fix if they ever watch anybody's video is limit fouls in the park to three because that forces people to have to play defense as opposed to trying to reach their way through the entire game because essentially you get eight fouls to use playing 2v2. You get 12 fouls to use if you're playing 3v3. You know, out of all those attempts, you might get lucky to get one block, one steal. If you limit those foul attempts, they can't do that. Right there, a great move, score 17-9. But what that last move did, it finally showed both parties' dribble combination. So me and RDA Chalk are already aware of what dribble combination is coming. The real bug, he has yet to shoot a jump shot. I'm not saying he can't hit them, he's just has yet to shoot any of them. So his confidence in shooting has to be low, which is bad considering the fact that he's supposed to be the point guard out of the two. All right. At this point, turnovers are big, missed shots are big. 
You know, we're down 17-9. We can't really afford to miss too many more shots or turn the ball over too much more. You know, when they get the ball back, that's pretty much game over. Um, so, like I said, they strength is perimeter defense, but I got a little bit of moves. Y'all saw the draw Morant crossover right there, the in and out to the right, back to the left, all the way to the rim with some speed to it. Like, although I don't do all the same dribble moves all the other guards use, you know, I'm pretty crafty when it comes to handling the ball and maneuvering to get the defense to do what I want it to do. That's what I'm great at, manipulating the defense. I'm going to force you to leave open what I want to leave open, which is that three ball by my partner. So at this point, I'm killing this guy, right? I'm not saying the team we're playing against is bad or nothing. Clearly, they was up 13-0 at some point in the ball game, but I'm killing this guy now. Um, and a lot of times you see it, edge start to switch or something, but when you're both the same thing and the same size, it's, it's not a difference, all right? So if you know the strength is being able to switch, I'm exposing it because they're both the same size. All right, so right here, give me back the ball. This guy's just been racking up fouls, another crossover. He gets a good jump, but I kick it off to RDH off for an open shot, and he sold me. Oh, man. That's the one thing that does make it hard to trust your teammates. Gotta be able to deliver in the clutch. All right? I, for me, I ain't saying I necessarily got to score. I just like having the ball in my hands to create the play, whether I'm going to score or create it for somebody else. I just want the ball in my hands since I'm a clutch player. Uh, so right here, now we got to play some defense. Right there, we almost made him into a bad shot, but look at the defense. Look at the defense. Where is he going? I'm there. In and out, going the same way. I'm there. And they turn the ball over. Didn't even get a shot off. That's what I mean. Once you get their dribble combination down, look at them. All right. So right here, get the ball. He's going to get it back to me. And already a chalk. Another turnover. Again, we can't really afford it, but watch the defense. Forced to miss there. I should have got the rebound. It is what it is. But I'm here. He kicks it to this guy. This guy tries to make a move. I'm there. Right there, he probably should have shot it, but I'm there. RDA Chalk is there. Forced him into a bad shot. This time, I'm in position. And I can't kick it out to RDA Chalk. Again, I like to have the ball in my hands at this point in time, especially since he has had a couple of turnovers. But I'm going to force them to give me the shot that I want. I kick it again. And late. So that's two shots in a row RDA Chalk then sold me. This is the man I tell y'all put the money on. This is the man I'm telling y'all y'all can't beat this combination. And he done sold me twice in a big game. All right, we trying to end these guys' win streak. Now, the reason why I set up like this is because I can't shoot the ball. I want y'all to keep that in mind. I cannot shoot. So, again, I'm going to get the shot that I want. I force the little guy in there. RDA Hawk is going to work and fight. And I'm going to get him open, and he knocks down the big shot. 2017. This is why I don't ever give up on my teammates, man. You got to you gotta trust them through the thick and the thin. Even though them turnovers and missed shots hurt, you got to be able to trust them. Again, I'm going to get the shot I want. They both jump. I kick it to that man, and he's clutch. Big knockdown in the corner for RDH Hawk. Great comeback win. They started out 13-0. They was on a nine-game win streak. Come on now. Now we on to this 13-game win streak. All right. Combination we're going up against. Playmaking shot creator, versatile paint beats. This is the hardest offensive duo in any mode. As long as it's two or more, this is the hardest combination to beat. All right. Offensively. All right, now I'm going to go through their strengths and weaknesses as the game goes on, but y'all can see it. This man is level 40, and even though the versatile paint beast ain't all the way maxed out, clearly he just made a new build. As long as he can shoot and rebound, that's all he really needs to do. Think about it. They're on a 13-game win streak. How many times do y'all think the other team touched the ball? And why is it so tough to beat these guys? Why I think it's even harder than the post-score and lockdown combo? Because of this guy right here. Look at the speed, stop, shoot, green. That is the hardest thing to defend in 2K ever. 
All right, now, the one thing that me and RDA Chalk have in common is we played so much that we played a lot of 1v1, and this is what we have to go against in, RB1, in 1v1. As you see this guy kind of fucking up RDA Chalk in the beginning, it's fine because, like I said, I'm fine giving up these threes early. Once they get to about 14, no more threes. You know, that's going to be our mentality. Now, watch me defending the guy. He sets the screen, RDA Chalk is there. And then he turns the ball back over. Again, playing against cop, turnovers are going to happen. I'm going to turn it over. I don't really trip about that. I care about the aftermath. The ability to pass. All right, you see the guard get the versatile paint beast, a wide open shot. Ability to pass. They both can shoot. The paint beast is very hard to keep from getting the offensive rebound. Especially if you get a wide open shot like that. But he missed. Now, you notice that guy missed a wide open one. That never really happens. But we have to be able to take care of the ball because if we give these guys the ball back, there's a good chance we won't see it again. Now, what is their weakness? I know what y'all thinking. The small guy because we're just going to post up the small guy, right? But no. Both of these guys are the weakness on defense. It's a reason why in Team pro -M, teams are built based off of these two builds. But everybody else pretty much has to be able to defend and shoot corner shots at a high clip. Typically, you have another playmaker that's just like this point guard. You have two defenders to defend the pick and roll, and then one more shooter. Typically, the big man, which is the versatile pain beast, he's going to play one side of the pick and roll, and they're going to have an actual perimeter lock to guard the point guard. But they're all based off of these two scoring on offense. That's how teams are built. My team built a little differently because it's all based around me. Without me, it's a lot tougher because I'm the one that kicks in and everything. You know, my passing is way better than any point guard. So that's how it's based. But teachers on everybody has their strength and weaknesses. And as you can see right here, this is why both of them are the biggest weakness. The big man. It's too slow to keep up on the perimeter. His only strength comes from anybody going inside the paint. And that's if he's disciplined. But you see right here, if I post up, he has to drop back down. The guard has to keep running in circles. Now, he's just giving up easy points. Because we're constantly keeping the defense moving. That's why I said they're the greatest offensive duo. But they're also probably like the second worst defensive. The worst defensive is two guards, but by far, this, they might be the second worst defensive duo out there. You know, two wings are really good because they both can defend everything, but they typically are not as good offensively. So, man, it's crazy how your greatest strength could be your greatest weakness, and that's what it is right now. As explosive as this guard is, you know, he's only as good as he can get the ball in his hands. Which is why in the up and down game, possession for possession, those guys tend to be better. But it's only if people don't know how to run a style. You know, my style can beat anything, which I'm proving it here with me and my partner RDA Chalk, who I trust even if the money is on the line in any, in any situation, you know. I'm pretty sure we can come out with a dub because we've both been able to show that if you can stop each player on the opposite team and develop a way to score on both of them, as you see again, the little guy running, can't keep up. By the time he trying to get out to the perimeter, the shot's already going up. Why is it like that? Because the big man don't want to be on the perimeter. That's a weakness. Well, me, as big as I am, I'm guarding the perimeter, I'm guarding bigs, and I'm playing point guard. I can get ripped more than anybody else. Again, watch me back up to the corner. He jumps again, easy bucket. Simple. But, let's be honest, man. I wouldn't show y'all that game if it was that damn easy. These guys are on a 13-game win streak. So right there, the big man does contest, and that's the only way he can contest is by jumping. They get the rebound. Now, how do you defend this guy, really? Now, I'm there. I'm sitting on it. But when he can utilize a screen, how do you defend him? One-on-one, -on -one, I like, yeah, I prepared for that. RDA Chalk prepared for that. 
But when he comes off his screen, bruh. Hey, watch the defense. Real talk, watch the defense. RDA Chalk is there. He's gonna, always going to force him back into the screen. Goes back to the screen. He stops before he even gets to the other side and knock it down. How do you defend that? And if you don't think it's bad enough, even if you guard these little guys perfectly, and it don't have to be a little guard. These are just like the meta right now. It could be a 6-3 guard. But even if you defend them perfect, watch my defense on this guy. Force him to pick it up. He's patient, gives it back to the big man. Big man gives it back to him. And I'm on him. I get through the screen. Hand in his face, he greens it. How do you defend that? But like I always tell you guys and what I've been saying in the whole video, trust your teammates. Now, I played defense. We just got to come up with one more stop. He's not going to shoot it. Big man gets baited into a bad pass. RDA Chalk just has to be patient. Now, look, they don't know who they want to defend. RDA Chalk is wide open for the game. No. I get the offensive rebound. And remember, like I told you guys, I can't shoot. But you got to trust your teammates. I'm lethal. I'm the best player on the court. So this is what I do. Simple as that. You trust me, teammates, to come up with the ball and stop two win streaks in a row. And you just come out victorious because of that man right there. Ain't nothing better than that. Heading into the holidays, man. I hope you guys enjoy time with your families and everything. And I hope coming out of the holidays, you will have a partner that you can trust to get out there and grind for the next season. You know, I'm trying to reach level 40. Hopefully I do. If I don't, it's all love, man. I, I just want to play some Team Pro-Am. Hopefully we can get that going at some point. But if not, either way, this is looking like my last 2K season. So I hope you guys have enjoyed my content. If I come out with any more videos, you guys will see them. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. But it's been Lethal and RDH Hulk signing off, man. We'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.